Hello and welcome to another video, so similar to our video of our Cursed General deck, we're going to be taking a look at a Flame and Glass Shift deck. Why? Because I've wanted to do Flame and Glass again for a long time as well, and we're still looking for some interesting videos to make, and Flame and Glass was one that I wanted to have a lot of fun with. So here is the old deck, this is one that I'd done a previous video on, which I'm sure you can find on the channel somewhere, I haven't done too many Flame and Glass videos, but this was back during about Rage of Bahamut era, which was quite a while ago now, well over a year. It was a lot of fun, and Harnessed Flame and Harnessed Glass were great cards. There a lot of fun to play, but obviously the inconsistency of getting them out is the killer for it because it's really difficult to get these to go off due to their effect only happening at the start of your turn. So getting that to go off really required a good dimensional shift, which means you needed a minimum of three to really pull this off on turn nine. Of course, you could do it with four as well on turn ten, but by turn ten it's a lot harder to really win with this. But Overall, this deck was a lot of fun and a deck that I really enjoyed playing, so we'll take a quick look at the new version of this deck that I've put together, using some of the new spell booster mechanics like Magic Owl, Vesper Witch Hunter, which I actually really enjoy this card, even though it is basically just another like uh, magic missile, it's just an extra ping effect, but it does work with the Consecration, which is one card that actually works fairly well, considering you want a nice amount of draw. Everything else in this deck though, pretty much a normal D shift deck for the most part, except the flame and glass added in, which is what flame and glass shifts were usually like. It's more about your playstyle and just being able to hit that D shift and flame and glass at the right time so that you can pull them off. And considering how amazing this card is to actually look at, it's absolutely awesome, fully animated. So it'll definitely be worth it to see it played. So let's get into it and take a look. So initially I went to make this video about a week ago, unfortunately I struggled too much and gave up trying to do it. I sat back down today to make this video and was like, okay, we'll give it a go. Three games in, we've managed to pull off Flame and Glass, which is pretty sweet. So we do have at least a couple of games with Flame and Glass to show off, which is really nice. Of course the games are difficult because you are prioritizing D shifts over everything else, so getting a good starting hand is usually what you want. Having no turn 1 and turn 2 though is really difficult. At least we are going to have the Kaleidoscope Glow for turn 3, which will allow us to use Fates on turn 4 if we don't have another play. And Vesper Witch Hunter isn't a great turn 4 play in this situation at least. But the more spell boosting we can get, the better we will do. So all we can really do is play out cards, draw cards, and deal with the board. That's really all this deck is good for. Since we are running triple harness flame and glass, we can actually take advantage of those to close out games. I do have one win that I won't be showing in this video, but that I'd managed to win just by throwing the dimensional shift, a flame, and the flame destroyer. And that did allow me to do well, well and truly more damage than I needed. So, a nice Magic Owl, that's always a nice way to spell boost, and it allows us to play the Vesper Witch Hunter as well, which is not too bad. It's just an extra spell boost, and the potential of getting more draws later on. And it also combos with itself, so Vesper Witch Hunter and Vesper Witch Hunter can play off each other as a board ping, along with being a draw, so even without any Earthrite spells on its own, it's just a pretty okay card. So we do see the Bellinus get played, and a Gremory, which I felt was a little odd. I'm guessing because they have double Gremory, which means they're going to be playing it next turn. So my focus this turn is actually clearing out this board and just going ham with spell boosting. So getting a little bit lucky with this Mysterian Knowledge, to get the Mysterian Missile was kind of all I had a chance at here. I was definitely dealing with the 8-8, and I did decide to throw the Flame Destroyer, as it was just a pretty solid card, and it will draw away a lot of potential damage going forward. Which should save us at least a turn or so. So we do have the Dimensional Shift at 10, which means it is in playable range, but not for our Flame and Glass combo. So I do go for the Alula, which is just like a Magical Owl when you're playing it like this. Except, of course, the reoccurring end turn effect is really handy when played on 6 or 7 because you do get at least 3 spell boosts, sometimes only 2 before turn 9, which can be enough to make a huge difference. And if you are throwing the Evo, it's guaranteed to get 3 before turn 9 if you are playing on 7, so why not? This Demon Lord is a little tricky as it is going to pretty much wipe out these couple of followers pretty consistently. We do have the Fiery Embrace as a way to deal with this, but it's really our only option. We do want some better draws here, especially going into turn 9 next turn. 
Insight, perfect pickup into Magic Missile, even better. These top decks are going to be insane. Kaleidoscope Glow being able to return. I managed to bolster hand a little bit just so I've got some room. Do the Wind Blast just for the extra spell boost. And finally, the Fiery Embrace going from 8 to 2 on our dimensional shift by the end of the turn. Absolutely nuts. So at this point we can pretty easily go for the Harness Flame and Glass, all we were counting on is that they didn't kind of ward up too heavily or do anything too nuts. Because Flame and Glass, its effect allows us to basically deal 7 to everything on our opponent's board, then deal 7 to face thanks to its basic effect of just attacking, so really crazy play. So there it is, Flame and Glass, 7 to everything and then 7 to face, an extra dimensional shift just to close this game out and finish them off for the extra. In total, a pretty comfortable 28 damage. Can't really go wrong with that. And the next matchup is against Rune, so a Rune on Rune matchup is a little risky. Um, taking the advantage of going first really helps me because it means their big spell boosty cards like Dimensional Shift probably aren't going to be played too early and if they're playing pretty much anything other than Dimensional Shift we should be at a pretty decent advantage. And we start off with a Dimensional Shift, a Vespa and a Fate so that's not a bad start and we also get the Harnessed Flame. The reason we are running so much draw power with this deck is for the Harnessed Flame and Glass and Dimensional Shift so we can get all those cards as early as possible so that we have them all set up, preferably the Dimensional Shifts but you can't really go too wrong overall with this. Of course, that's where something like, I believe it's Lou, allows you to draw something like Dimensional Shift. That could also be good. I did run that in the old version, but I cut it for other cards, mainly spell boosting cards, because I had extra draw power. So, a really good turn 3. Getting a really nice little boost there. We've also got the Insight, which is going to work in our favour. Unfortunately, I do need to deal with this Unica. I don't want to leave too many followers on board. Vespa lined up well, giving us a nice draw and the way to remove that. And Demonic Strike is good, I guess. It means we're absorbing some of the damage, especially since it looks like they're running an Earthrite deck at this point. So they're probably looking at a way to go for Mysteria Burn. Actually, it's probably just straight up Mysteria Burn over Earthrite, considering it's unlimited. And Magic Owl, pretty much an ideal turn to use this. We are going to be able to spell boost, we're going to be able to use our Fate's Hand, draw some more cards, and really just sit pretty comfortably with our spell boost. We also got the Mystic Seer, which is a pretty awesome draw. That means we've actually got that to play on turn 6, and that's going to give us some massive spell boost over the course of 3 turns. It's probably going to be the thing that really helps us get those dimensional shifts down to play a bill ranges, which is good. Plus we can deal with this 6-2 without too much hassle. The only real risk is that they can burn us down with too much damage. So there's one spell boost, and the end of turn will give us the second one. Mystic Seer is actually quite a fun card. I really enjoy using it. Even though it is just a one-off, still a pretty decent one-off. Magic Missile to face for a couple of damage. I'll take that. So we don't have much else now. Kaleidoscope, pretty much only decent play. Insight, pretty good draw. Um, I decided to play the Consecration, or Concentration, sorry, because I just need it. <laughs> I need the Spell Boost. I needed to bring it down. There wasn't really any other reason. And I could free up a spot with this anyway. Luckily, we absorbed a fair bit of this turn with that, which is good. I mean, stops them from playing too many followers. A Mysterian Knowledge into a Mysterian Circle. Not quite as good, but Mysterian Circle should do a nice job. Buying us some time, getting a little bit more damage to face, and putting all of our cards in a playable range for turn 9. Plus, we've actually got a double Harnessed Flame and Glass. Considering we're going to have the end of turn spell boost and the spell boost from playing a dimensional shift, we should actually be able to use both sets of Flame and Glass, going for a double Flame and Glass turn. The only thing is we do not want our opponent to concede. That has happened before and it absolutely ruins these videos as a concede just doesn't get you the Flame and Glass, which is disappointing. But it looks like this guy's going to be a champion. He's going to play it out to the end. We got a nice Flame and Glass. We're going to play our second ones. We're going to go for a second dimensional shift, go face for 14 damage, and end our turn for even more value here. So in total we had an absolutely astronomical amount of damage. We would have 
pretty much exceeded uh, 40 by that point, I think, once you include Snowman. Absolutely nuts. So while it's not a competitively viable deck, this deck is definitely a lot of fun, and if you're looking to just meme around with a deck, this is something that can be quite enjoyable, along with, of course, the Cursed General deck, another deck that was quite enjoyable. You guys did make some pretty good suggestions for that Cursed General deck, and I'll definitely be checking those out in future, probably once the new expansion drops, because we'll have some more interesting cards to hopefully work with, but overall, this was a lot of fun. I got the Flame and Glass off a couple times, which was... Just great, I really enjoyed doing that, and I hope you guys did too, as it is definitely an awesome card to pull off. So, hope you guys enjoyed the video, hit the like button and subscribe, you'll find the decklist in the description below, and I'll catch you guys next time. See ya.